this is very much a successor to the previous talk. So Eero has introduced the Tsibble package and the Fable package is intended to be the forecasting functionality built on top of Tsibble. Um, so let me just go back a little bit. So those people who do forecasting probably know about the forecast package, which uh, is probably the best known of the packages I've written. Um, it began a long, long time ago. I, I was using R in the late 90s. Um, I was writing functions for doing consulting projects, um, and they eventually sort of coalesced into a package, uh, which ended up on CRAN in about 2006, and it's sort of evolved since then. It's pretty widely used. There's about 100,000 package downloads per month, so I can't change the forecast package very much without upsetting a lot of people and having my inbox full of, of outraged uh, users. So I thought, well, if we're going to do something in the tidy framework, let's just leave that alone. Uh, people can continue to use it. Uh, I will continue to maintain it, um, but probably add new functionality to the, to the Fable package rather than the forecast package. So the Fable package is going to be a replacement for the forecast package. Um, it's called Fable for a, for a good reason. So firstly, we're forecasting tables. Um, and secondly, a Fable is something that is not true, but it tells you something useful about reality. And that's what a forecast is too. It's never true, but it tells you something useful about what the future might look like. Um, it's uh, in, going to integrate with the Tidyverse packages, as Eero has explained. Um, it's designed for forecasting many series simultaneously, where the forecast package was only ever designed for forecasting one series at a time. Um, we're trying to make the interface much more consistent than the forecast package was uh, as it evolved and took on functionality from other packages. The interface was um, had to had to be sort of a little inconsistent, so we're using a much more consistent interface in Fable. The forecast will be distribution forecast rather than points and intervals, and we'll have a lot more flexible transformation. And in particular, it's going to be very good at handling sub-daily and multiple seasonal data, which the forecast package uh, doesn't, I mean, it does have some functionality for that, but it's, uh, it's not great. Okay, so all modeling functions will be, use a formula similar to LM or GAM or any of the other formula-based interfaces that you're familiar with. So you will have a transformation, if necessary, of the Y variable. So the T is some transformation function, maybe a log, maybe a box-cox transformation. And then there'll be a model specification on the right-hand side. Um, and I'll show you some examples of how that will work. Uh, so they can be exogenous regressors, but it might be some model specification about the ARIMA model or an ETS model or some other model form. The um, transformations will be handled seamlessly. So if you go, if you want to fit a model to log data, it will do the back transformation for you. It will recognize you've done a transformation. It will do the back transformation. You don't have to specify that. So here's a little example. I'm just on a single series to get started. So I took a, a TS object um, from one of my packages ran it through as Sybil, and it comes back as a nice Sybil object ready to go with an index column set up, and the second column has just been by default called value. This is Australian eating out expenditure, it's monthly data. So if you want to fit an ARIMA model to that, uh, after taking logs and you've chosen a particular ARIMA model, the format will look something like this. You pipe it into the ARIMA function, notice all uppercase, talk about that in a minute. Uh, we take logs, of the value column, and then we've chosen a particular type of ARIMA model on the right-hand side. If you leave off the right-hand side, it will automatically select a model for you. Then what comes back is a Mabel, a model table, uh, with data, the, the data that was used in the first column and the model that was selected in the second column. So that those cells, the first cell in the first, first row, first column cell, contains all of the data and the uh, First row, second column cell contains um, an object, the model object. So you can see this is designed for multiple models. Because we've just got a single series, we just get one row here. And then you can pass that into summary to get the usual sort of output that you might be familiar with if you've done ARIMA modeling. It looks exactly the same as in the forecast package. Um, you can pass it into forecast, and it will take the Mabel object and return a Fable object with just by adding a single additional column, which contains the forecast object. And you can see that it's 
here it says that the, uh, the distribution is a transform normal distribution. So it's normal after the log transformation. And there's 24 forecasts that are contained in that, that uh, cell. You pass that to summary um, and it will give you back a, uh, another, another Sybil with the mean of each forecast period and an in a, uh, interval. So by default, it'll come back with 80 and 95% intervals. If you choose some other interval, it'll give you back those. So this is, again, a little different. Because we're, we're storing it as a distribution here, that means that you can, chat, you can produce any interval you like after the event. You don't, whereas in the forecast package, you have to specify the intervals up front, and you can't choose another one after you've already calculated the forecasts. OK, or you can, you can pipe it through to water plot and get the sort of plotting functions you might be familiar with. Uh, and when you pipe it through to the plotting function, because you haven't specified the level, it's using 80 and 95% by default. Again, similar to the forecast package. OK, so let's do another example. This one was sub-daily data. So this is 30-minute data. Um, and uh, so the, the, the format is you just have an index, which is date and time, and then other variables. So we're interested in modeling demand as a function of temperature and was it a work day or not. So I could have set work day up as a factor, of course, but I've set it up as a, as a zero, 01 variable here. And then I want to fit a regression model with ARIMA errors. So I pass the data into the ARIMA function. I specify the regression part of the model. So this is just a, like a typical linear regression model. But because it's in the ARIMA function, it will add ARIMA errors on automatically and comes back with the sort of results you might be familiar with. And then if you want to forecast that, you just have to give it some new data with exactly the same columns as the uh, original data, and it will be able to figure out how to do it. OK, my third example, this is Australian prison population data. Um, so this is a little more complicated because we have keys now. The other two examples, we had no keys, so there was just one series of interest uh, that we were forecasting. In this case, we've got state, gender, and legal all crossed with each other, gives us 32 combinations of those factors. And uh, we're interested in the number of prisoners in each of those combinations. So the first row of this is female remand prisoners in the ACT. There's not very many of them. Uh, ACT is a small state. and uh, but for some of the larger states, we'll have bigger counts. This is quarterly data, so you can see the Sybil's been set up with the um, index being the, the quarter variable there. If I pass that whole Sybil into the ETS function, again, all uppercase, and say I'm going to model the count column of the data set, then it'll come back with all the models for all of the combinations um, automatically. So you can see that it's come back with the keys, with the data sets that have been um, subsetted for each combination of those keys, and then which model has been selected for each of the combinations. And if I pass that to forecast, it will produce all of the forecasts for all of the keys. So this makes it very, very easy to do a lot of forecasting for a lot of different combinations quite quickly. Um, the next step, which is not yet implemented, is to produce aggregation and reconciliations. So a typical issue in forecasting is you might um, want to forecast for all of these different combinations, but you also want to forecast for the state separately, for females and males separately, for remand prisoners and sentence prisoners separately. And you want those forecasts to add up in an appropriate way. So we will be putting in the uh, functionality to do that. Those of you who are used to using my HTS package to do that, that functionality will be rolled in here in basically a single line to say, Here's my collection of forecasts. Please reconcile them. Um, so if you're used to the forecast package, uh, how will it be to move? We're trying to make it as seamless as possible um, without causing uh, code to, to crash in, un, in undesirable ways. So any forecast function that currently produces a model, like ETS lowercase, auto.arima, TBATs, et cetera, will have an equivalent Fable model function. And just to distinguish them, in case you load both packages at the same time, every model function will be uppercase. 
It's the only uppercase, all uppercase functions in the package, so it tells you this is a model function. This will take a Tibble and produce a Mabel. So all the Fable models will produce Mables. The forecast function works on Mabel objects to produce Fable objects. So we're trying to be very consistent here. In the forecast package, there are some functions that go directly from a time series to a forecast object. We're not going to do that. So every Tibble goes to a Mabel object, which goes to a Fable object. So it makes the workflow cleaner, and you can switch out the model function without having to change anything else in the code. Um, and we'll also eventually replace the HTS package, as I said before. Okay, so one of, the th one of our uh, purposes here is to simplify the model development process as much as possible and to allow other people to extend it um, so that if someone comes up with a nice a time series model that they want to use on, uh, within this infrastructure and be able to um, create forecast objects or Mabel objects or so on, then it should be able to work easily. So we're providing tools to easily create new Fable models, um, to easily create the specials that end up in the formulas. So you saw in an earlier example I had a PDQ and a capital PDQ for specifying an ARIMA model. They're special functions. Uh, we want to make sure that other people can create special functions for other purposes um, so that you can then just follow, concentrate on um, you know, the aspects of model estimation and forecasting rather than having to worry about learning lots of, lots of R to do the interface. Um, so the Fable functionality will automatically handle transformations and back transformations of any type. This is quite amazing. You can, um, if you want to do square roots or cube roots or or do weird transformations like you want to use a sign transformation so it's not even monotonic, it will handle it without any trouble. Um, plotting tools will be there, are there. We haven't yet put in the accuracy measures and evaluation tools, but they'll be there um, handling ensembles, handling hierarchies, and so on. So the key structure that Eero talked about is crucial for getting the hierarchies to work properly, um, which is one of the reasons it's all there, but it's also important for doing plotting and other things. So for more information about this, um, so this work is uh, ongoing. We're calling it Tidyverts, T-I-D-Y-V-E-R-T-S, the tidy version of time series, uh, which is a little bit of a joke with Hadley, but also as hopefully people can remember it easily. So if you go to tidyverts.org, uh, you will be able to see the, um, where we're up to with, with this work at the moment. Um, that, that'll redirect to our GitHub site so you can download packages. Um, at the moment, there's four or five packages there. So we've just talked about two of them so far, the Sybil package and the Fable package. Only Sybil at the moment is on CRAN. Uh, the others, we, at least Fable, we're hoping to be on CRAN later this year, uh, and probably some of the other ones as well. Um, I will blog about it eventually. I haven't written anything about it yet. Uh, I just was waiting to get it sufficiently mature that. Um, having people try things out was not going to generate too much email. Um, so uh, when I, I'll blog about it on my blog. You can see it there, robjheinman.com, and the slides are also available at robjheinman.com. Thank you.